Um, they weren't speaking to the question of whether it could be a legal enterprise with a one man doing illegal con illegal acts in the context of the enterprise. Simply speaking, a RICO enterprise is a criminal organization. You can define it broadly, but it's not an organization simply with a criminal. And that is what the government is asking um, the, uh, the court to find here. You are welcome to HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we discuss real issues with real people like you. We are still featuring R. Kelly. Real name Robert Sylvester Kelly. Also known as the R&B King. The definition of RICO has been a subject of contention throughout the case against R. Kelly, with government arguing that they were successful in proving the RICO enterprise theory, and the trial judge Ann Donnelly siding with them, but the defense insisting that there was no RICO enterprise and that the government did not provide sufficient evidence to suggest that R. Kelly in fact operated such a criminal organization. It's rather difficult to understand why the entire U.S. Department of Justice would lack even a single sane state attorney that has taken time to research the RICO enterprise theory, and realize that the enactors of this part of the statute did not intend to pursue organizations that are not engaging in crime as a common purpose, but those that that were initially formed for this illegal purpose, were those that have only derailed from their legal purpose and opted to engage in illegal common purpose. The word common purpose being the key word and common denominator in this rather contentious matter, it is important that everyone knows there can't be an enterprise without a common purpose. And therefore simply identifying a legal entity without zeroing down to a common illegal engagement as a purpose is not enough to justify RICO charges on any of its members. In order for the New York jury to find R. Kelly guilty of RICO violation therefore, the government needed to present sufficient evidence that shows R. Kelly's music management team actually did engage in criminal activity as a united front with a common purpose, and not the stories of how the employees packed R. Kelly's luggage when he was going to the alleged trips, and how they supposedly invited people backstage and handed them phone numbers, actions which are not in any way illegal, and for which they did not know what happened behind the curtains when they were with R. Kelly alone. According to Bonjan's New York appeal submission therefore, an enterprise does not become illegal from its members doing their normal routine tasks that were all meant to manage and promote R. Kelly's music business. If they didn't know what R. Kelly was actually doing with these women, they definitely had no reason to stop packing his bags for him, something which they did even before the women came into the equation, or to stop booking his flights, and flights of any other individuals who were way above their ages of consent in those states, and those who had to either attend his shows or move with him again for the promotion of his music business and nothing criminal. If R. Kelly in his own right moved on to relate with these women in ways that would break the law as alleged, or to film CP with them in the videos, something all his employees testified they did not know about, that remains his crime and not the crime of the enterprise, and therefore does not qualify him to be charged with RICO. I believe at this point we all know what attorney Jennifer Bonjean was meaning when she said a RICO enterprise is an organization involved in a common purpose of crime, and not necessarily an organization with a criminal in it. Thanks to Bonjean the appeal judges now know what a RICO enterprise is, and hopefully will not be confusing it with an enterprise with a criminal among the staff or company heads like they have done for the past five years since R. Kelly was indicted. Just the action of R. Kelly doing whatever he could to keep his alleged misdeeds with these women as private as possible and away from the knowledge of his music management team, and the fact that the entire team that testified in court did indicate they did not know what was in his bags and what the camera in his room was used for are enough to render the RICO charges against him inappropriate and irrelevant to the case. And besides, some of his employees also testified that when they got to learn about what was happening, they resigned. This alone shows that in fact there was never a common purpose which is a prerequisite for any enterprise to be considered a racketeering organization. In fact if this argument by government and one of the appeal judges that appeared to be most vocal throughout attorney Bonjean's presentation was to be followed, there would be thousands of cases to be revisited in order to properly charge the already tried and sentenced criminals, most of whom were indeed working with organizations and some at the top levels of these companies, and that may have continued to have their bags packed and trips arranged by their employees even when they were busy committing crime as individuals. And one example is Fox News boss Roger Ailes who continued to have his lunches arranged for him, and at which lunches he is reported to have met some of the women he allegedly abused. Perhaps even the president's son Hunter Biden who has been busy committing crimes of fraud while using government apparatus, 
living and traveling with his father from time to time on Air Force One with a life fully supported by government appendages, yet involved in fraudulent criminal activity now deserves to be charged with RICO, the government being the illegal enterprise. It's just hard to imagine that the law can be misinterpreted so illogically just so they can crack down on one man. Perhaps even former President Donald Trump did violate the RICO Act when he used government apparatus and its officials to aid his operations that led to the insurrection on the Capitol, an action that would in this case turn the United States government into a qualifying RICO enterprise. This would turn the country upside down. What the legislators who enacted this law had envisaged was the fact that these organizations sometimes do transform from doing their legal mandates and jointly with consensus engage in criminal patterns, and that's why even legal entities do in fact qualify to be investigated to determine if they qualify as RICO or not. But not that if the organization is legal and remains on truck doing its legal mandate but happens to have a criminal among them, that the entire enterprise must be taken down in the name of RICO. In fact the government theory of RICO could only succeed in providing dissatisfied malicious employees with an opportunity to take down the entire organization, by simply engaging in crime while maintaining their bags packed by the company staff and flights and lunches booked by the organization. It's comparable to suggesting that if an organization sent an envoy to another state and the envoy committed a crime in the destination while on duty, then the entire organization which facilitated him during the time of his crimes quickly becomes a RICO enterprise. This is not true and will never be true. And in fact R. Kelly's attorney Jennifer Bonjean is spot on when she says that a RICO enterprise is not an organization simply with a criminal, but an organization rooted in crime itself. Something the government was not able to prove with evidence in the case against R. Kelly. According to Sarah Hill, who on earth doesn't know that R. Kelly was railroaded by those so-called higher elites who are to gain millions from his downfall? The government literary advertised for accusers to come forward and help them in their likely paid job to lock him up. It's not common that we see such level of personal investment by government officials in taking down alleged criminals only suspected to have broken the law. The zeal with which Kim Fox and team operated was so unusual, and it appeared as though they were already aware of what the outcome was going to be. Overly prejudiced, R. Kelly had already lost at trial before the it even commenced. In various interviews with Kim Fox, she referred to R. Kelly as a criminal before he was even subjected to a trial. Only God will guide attorney Bon Jean in returning R. Kelly to freedom. According to Brenda Jones, I don't understand why the judge was constantly cutting Bon Jean off, and could not let her answer her questions especially during the rebuttal. He just couldn't give her the freedom to explain her points well but thankfully with her persistence, she managed to make her interpretations clear enough for an ordinary person to understand. I am quite sure if the women had been subjected to a lie detector, R. Kelly wouldn't be in prison. The pending question remains whether they also plan to go after Tasha Kay and the BOP officers too. They owe him back his freedom and everything else they took from him. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.